The President, please be seated. The court is now back in session. Without further ado, we would like now to hand over to the prosecution to continue questioning the witness. Co-prosecutor, thank you, Mr. Le President. Le Good afternoon, Mr. Nong So Pang again. Merci, This morning, bon après-midi, bon après Nong so Pang. You provided some information to the to us, but I would like uh, to. Pose a few more questions to you as follows. Prior to 1975, were you aware whether a telegram office was ever established? Si il existait un bureau du telegram. Response. Réponse. At each base, zone, dans chacune des bases, and sector, dans les zones, dans les secteurs, and every unit of a division, Et dans there division. must be a communication section and telegram for each zone and de division. Et de telegraph. Question. Question. Prior to 1975, again, Toujours avant 1975. did you ever receive any telegrams from a foreign country? Avez-vous jamais reçu de télégrammes provenant d'un pays étranger? Response: No, I didn't. Réponse: Non. However, I perhaps uh, could be Tout wrong. Fait. But in my section, I have I don't remember having trompe, received such messages or telegrams from a foreign country. Question. Now my next question is about question. the period of time after 1975, which is after the 17th après, of April 1975. When did you come to Phnom Penh? Quand? Êtes-vous venu à Phnom Penh? Response. I came to Phnom Penh Réponse. after the city had already been prepared and organized. It was late 1975 when I got uh, there and moved to this new location. C'est à ce moment-là que j'y ai Déménager. Question. Question. Who ordered uh, your relocation to Phnom Penh? Qui a donné l'ordre que vous vous établissiez And à Phnom Penh? And could you describe what Phnom Penh was like? Et pouvez-vous nous décrire à quoi came? ressemblait la ville lorsque vous y êtes arrivé? Response. Pon, who Réponse. was the team Pon, leader, was the one who ordered all these. Et celui he qui a assigned me to come to Phnom Penh. When I reached Phnom Penh, I noted that the city was very quiet. Arrivée, it was empty of the population. 
it it was not as populated Quel as Phnom Penh these days. La population était très réduite. Question. Elle pas aussi peuplée que la ville l'est aujourd'hui. When you arrived to Phnom Penh and you stated Avant that arriver. it was perhaps by late 1975. Vous peut-être à la fin de l'année 1975. Where were you located Où? at that time? Étiez-vous dans la ville à Response. Réponse. My office was at uh, the Soteros School. Mon bureau était près de l'école Soteros. Était à l'école Soteros, corrige l'interprète. Question. What was your role at that time? Question. Quelles étaient vos fonctions à l'époque? Response. I was a school Réponse. teacher. J'étais enseignant. I was in charge of providing training to people who Je could have been sent from various provinces. I had to train them on how to understand writing, reading, and typing. And I also was tasked with teaching them to understand some Latin letters and English. And gradually, I also taught them to decode the secret telegrams. Déchiffrer Apart les from secrets. teaching, I also decoded telegrams en plus de ces fonctions, sent to me des by Mr. Pon. Que Monsieur Pon m'envoyait. Question. When you were teaching Question. children, how old were these children? Quel âge avaient les enfants auxquels vous enseignez? And what was the motive behind training these children on decoding the telegrams? À la tâche de décoder les télégrammes. Response. Réponse. The main motive for teaching them was to ensure that these children acquired some skills to serve the party to the future. In particular, uh, the needed to be trained on decoding telegrams and typing. Et la All of these were important as part of their skills so that they could uh, perform uh, these work uh, to serve the party. These children mainly were 12 years Travailler pour le parti. Ces jeunes avaient surtout 12, 12 years old. 12 ans, plus ou moins. Question. I may need to seek Question. some clarification. You said that the children were about 10 to 12 years old. And the telegram were decoded or were written in code, Et que les secret code, were codé. the code prosecutor mic was not activated and the interpreter could not hear his last uh, pas part of the question. La partie de la question du procureur, car son microphone était éteint. Response, uh, I did not know further than that I was supposed to provide trainings to them 
so that Moi, they received these skills. Pour I do not know whether Anka used them for Je military purposes si or for civilian purposes. It's up to Anka. Civil, Anka It's none of my business. Question. Question. Apart from teaching, did you perform any other tasks? Yeah, indeed, uh, you apart said already that apart from teaching, you uh, was decoding the telegrams. Decoder telegrams. But what else did you do? And que how many autre? people worked under you? Et combien de personnes supervisiez vous Response. Réponse. The staff who were capable enough after receiving some training formés, uh, were les membres du personnel qui about few people only. There were about 40 children who were trained at that time, but people who could uh, decode the telegrams, there were only a few of them. Quelques-uns d'entre eux étaient capables de décoder les télégrammes. Question. Were these few people working under you? Et ces uh, quelques personnes you said that these few people worked under you. What about those who worked above you? Qu'en est-il de ceux qui étaient vos supérieurs? Response. Pon and Te were the two people who supervised me. Étaient mes supérieurs. Question. I would like to Question. also seek some clarification. Vous demander Did you ever engage in performing or, or sending the, or typing the telegrams yourself? Dactylographier et envoyer des telegrams vous-même? Response, uh, I did not do this on my own. Non, je ne l'ai pas fait par moi-même. Question, I thank Question. you very much indeed. I have only f my f uh, one of uh, the final questions to put to you. Um, my question is... Il reste une dernière question. Dit le procureur. Who was the head of the telegram section in Qui Phnom Penh? était à la tête de du service du télégraphe à Phnom Penh. Response. Réponse. The head of the telegram section on Chef top of me at that time were Pon and Tay. De moi, Pon et These Tay. people were the senior, Ces the most senior people in the tele communication sector of the CPK at that time. Du service des télécommunications du PCK Co prosecutor uh, Mr. President, Monsieur thank you. I have no remercie. further questions. Plus questions. Yep. The President, uh, International Co Prosecutor, Le you may président. now proceed. Le Co Procureur International, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Mr. President, and good afternoon, Your Honours, good afternoon, Council, and good afternoon to you, Mr. Non Sapang. Uh, allow me also to thank you on behalf of the co-prosecutors for being here today uh, to assist us um, in learning more about your work from 75 and 79. 
ici aujourd'hui et de nous aider à comprendre le travail que vous avez fait entre 1975 et 1979 et de nous aider à I'm going to start my questions connaître la vérité. First by briefly clarifying just a couple of the areas that you've mentioned so far and then we will move on to questions about your work um, in Phnom Penh in much more detail. You explained to us earlier that there were communications via telegram from zones, bases, and battlefields to the upper authority. And of course, that you helped translate some of these, some of these telegrams. My first question is: um, Do you recall starting with zones? Do you recall which zones were reporting in the period that you were working at B20? Quelles étaient, d'après vos souvenirs, quelles étaient les zones qui envoyaient de tels rapports à l'époque où vous travailliez à B20? Thank you. Le témoin. Merci. The zones and armies who were reporting to the upper authorities. Les zones et les militaires qui uh, uh, let me let me ask for clarification first. Are you referring to the period before 1975 or after 1975? Yes, indeed, the, the period prior to 1970, April 1975, prior to April 1975. Before 1975, the units that sent uh, the telegrams to the upper authorities included uh, the special zones, uh, east zone, north zone, uh, north east zone, north west zone, west zone, west zone and Southwest zone, sud as well as three other autonomous regions, namely Prahvihir, Mundulkiri, and Simrip or Dormian J. As for armies. Only His Excellency Son Saint, uh, who had direct communication with uh, the uh, seul, uh, leaders at the upper authorities. However, others uh, did not have that authority to come and uh, uh, communicate directly uh, with uh, the upper authority. Thank you for that comprehensive answer. Returning to the zones. L'accusation. Je vous remercie de cette réponse complète. Pour en revenir aux zones. How were you able to understand from a telegram, for example, that it came from the east zone? Lorsque vous Still staying with the period before 1975. But uh, response. Réponse. Normally, the telegrams had secret code numbers. So all the telegrams we received uh, contained uh, numbers, code numbers, but there were headings of or the letterhead. For example, they had N, R, and then number. And then it followed by CK. CK is referred to the 
uh, number of orders of the uh, telegrams and then uh, underneath it there was the date and finally there was an indication of the direction in accordance with uh, the uh, specified uh, code number. For example, the east zone with the code number A75. That is for east zone. So whenever I saw A75, I immediately knew that it was meant for the east zone. Thank you. Um, who was it that um, allocated those numbers, uh, A75 to East Zone and uh, another number for a different zone? But, uh, Response. Response. Those secret code numbers were planned in advance by Pon and I. Entre At that time, we uh, decided to assign code numbers uh, for uh, for each uh, zone actually this this specific uh, code number was not the exact number i i only brought it up as an example only thank you um, and just a couple more questions on that period before april 75 could you recall for us how often, on average perhaps, how often each zone would report to the upper level? Response. As far as the telegrams were concerned, the frequency of telegram communication depended on the actual situation of respective zone. For example, if there were uh, contentious uh, battles, then the uh, telegrams were sent uh, 24 hours around the clock. But for zones that were already uh, liberated, uh, then uh, the telegrams communication was less frequent. For example, the uh, East Zone uh, had to communicate very uh, often. Uh, it, it had to operate 24 hours a day and uh, in other areas where war were uh, breaking up, then uh, there were a lot of communication. Again, in that uh, period, if we can look at the numbers Pendant from a different période, perspective, pour, uh, on average, uh, how many voir ces incoming en telegrams moyenne, would you have translated de per day, and then how many outgoing telegrams per day, jour, if you can recall? But response, I do not recall uh, that well because Je ne m'en pas très bien. it was a long time ago, but um, Parce que il y a the longtemps. frequent telegrams communication 
as I said, uh, it depended on the uh, situation. Uh, at certain points of time, I had to work the whole day and night in order to uh, send uh, those telegrams out. Now, for the telegrams that were being sent from the upper level, Concernant les télégrammes provenant de l'autorité supérieure, is it also the case that there were telegrams to all of the zones that you mentioned earlier? I just want to make sure we have that correct. Were there also telegrams from the upper level to each of the zones and sectors and the military that you mentioned earlier? Tous les secteurs et les forces militaires que vous avez mentionné tout à l'heure. So what I am afraid I do not understand uh, your question. Could you please clarify it? Indeed, uh, and my apologies, it was confusing. Um, we talked about the incoming telegrams, and you said they came from the various zones, and you listed the zones and autonomous sectors. And I just want to ask, whether there were also telegrams being sent from B20 to each of those zones and sectors that you mentioned. Response. The outgoing telegrams were not as frequent les as the incoming telegrams. Moins que les telegrams now, moving forward in time, um, you described how dans le temps, at one point the unit was split into two, one group remained at B20, and you were in that group, I think you said, and another group, uh, or PON, moved to the front line west of Phnom Penh. Do you recall when that happened? Was it in 1974, was it late 1974, was it early 1975? Do you have any recollection of the time? Est-ce que vous avez une idée de la période à laquelle cela s'est passé? The division of my unit into two back then was uh, done in late 1974. And when Pon left and headed to the west of Phnom Penh, do you recall who he went with? But response, I do not know, but what I knew at the time was that uh, Pon was uh, close to Pol Pot. So wherever Pol Pot went, uh, he would bring Pon along with him. And when Pon left, Question. Um, do you know which location west of Phnom Penh he moved to? Response that I do not know. Réponse, je ne le sais pas. Very well. And Question. Très bien. after he left in late 1974, um, 
was he or Pol Pot still able to communicate via telegram from that new location west of Phnom Penh? But the response. I stayed at the rear and at the front line, uh, Pond was there. So whatever message or instruction Pol Pot wanted uh, to uh, send uh, to me, uh, he could communicate with me 24 hours over 24 hours. And how did Pond communicate with you? Was it by telegram or was it in a different way? But the response. My communication with uh, Pon was through secret telegrams. We did not have access to telephone. We uh, used Titita or Morse. Nous utilisions hey. le code Morse pour communiquer. to communicate with him. So we uh, communicated through a uh, secret code numbers, and if it was the information about the victory uh, from the battlefield, then I, my uh, section or unit uh, at the rear would prepare the report of the victory and submit it uh, to the uh, broadcasting unit in order for public broadcast. And I'll just ask you a follow-up question. Um, did I understand correctly that when victory was achieved in Phnom Penh, that that um, was communicated by secret code via telegram to you, and you then decoded that message for public broadcasting. Did I understand correctly what you were telling us earlier? I am sorry, I don't réponse. think uh, that the uh, voice is getting through my headset. Uh, uh, can anybody regrette, check my headset? I don't plus rien dans mes casques. Est-ce que quelqu'un pourrait uh, vérifier mes écouteurs? I'll, I'll repeat my question. I'll repeat my question. Thank you. Um, I think you said that Pon communicated to you um, via coded telegrams in relation to a victory on the battlefield, and you then decoded that message for public broadcasting. My question is, was that a message about the victory of the 17th of April? Or, or was it a number of different messages? But, uh, the response. The telegrams were classified into two categories. The first category was about secret uh, telegrams, and the other one was an open message. The victory, uh, the uh, message about victory, uh, was not in the uh, secretive forms. It was in a public form, so we did not use any code numbers. We simply used the uh, most code. So I did not have to translate it or decode it. I simply prepared into my version and then 
forwarded it to the broadcasting unit. Thank you very much for clarifying that. Um, do you recall, just on that message, do you recall if that was received by you and then broadcast on the 17th of April, or was it um, after that date? Est-ce que vous l'avez reçu et diffusé le 17 avril ou à une date ultérieure, d'après vos souvenirs Response. Réponse. Well, at that time, we did not have uh, advanced uh, technology, so it was not that fast. Uh, we did not uh, broadcast uh, it immediately upon our victory. I remember that it was uh, 9.30 when the victory uh, was uh, claimed, but actually the message to me, uh, to uh, message reached my unit at about uh, 10 or so, so I had to uh, prepare uh, a written uh, document to submit uh, to the broadcasting uh, unit. So it was not in a very uh, timely manner, uh, and I was also blamed uh, that uh, I was uh, uh, belated in uh, pronouncing the victory of the uh, Democratic Cambodia. So at that time, there was uh, some one or two hours delay. To my recollection, uh, the pronouncement, public pronouncement on radio of the victory was made sometime around 11. And we are discussing the 17th of April, 1975. It was on that date. Uh, Sorry, it was not the uh, telegram, but it was the uh, victory news or the pronouncement of victory. It was. It had nothing to do with uh, secret uh, telegrams, but it was the announcement of the victory uh, gained uh, in Phnom Penh. Thank you. Um, and just one more question, at least for now, on pre-75. Um, in your statement, you described your assignment in 1973 by Hong, and you talked about this earlier as well. And this assignment, of course, was to B-17. Now, I will just give the relevant ERNs and ask you a very brief question. Uh, this is document E3-64. The ERNs are in Khmer 00328023. Zero zero four one one six nine four says and English zero zero three three four zero four two. And I will just read a part of this passage and then ask you what you meant by it. Quote In nineteen seventy three the committee of prayer vihia sector named Hong appointed me to work at the party central committee called B-17, which was a tempering place whose work included food production. I just wanted to ask how it was that you knew that B-17 was an area or office associated with the party central committee at that time. 
était lié au comité central du parti à cette époque Pas de réponse. When I was sent there, I did not know that uh, B17 was related to the Party Central Committee, but I learned it from Mr. Hong, Hong who educated me at the time that I was to be sent to the uh, center office. I uh, had to travel on foot, and it took me one month uh, to reach B17. And when I got to B17, I did not go anywhere else. So it was my assumption from that point uh, that uh, that was the uh, party center office. Thank you very much. Now we will move on to uh, your work uh, in Phnom Penh. And you've already described to my colleague that your work there comprised um, two types of activities. One was to teach young children, 12-year-olds, uh, in a number of um, areas, including telegrams, uh, translation. And your other responsibilities included um, heading a telegram, telegram translation office. Um, now, just dealing briefly with these young uh, people whom you um, was it the case that they returned to the bases after they received training at the Sotiro School? Response. Some of the children were required by Anka to help Anka work in the bases where people with skills in telegrams were scarce. And some of them who were not capable enough even after training uh, to decode telegrams were asked to attend another learning session which is typing and receiving telegrams. Some even uh, proceeded to acquire some training courses on facts on writing or receiving facts. And some people who were very weak, uh, uh, they were sent to learn how to drive, to become drivers. For those who were sent back to the bases to provide uh, services, of translating telegrams. Les enfants qui étaient renvoyés vers as far as you know, um, did those children work in various telegram offices si ces enfants with which dans des bureaux, uh, party center communicated uh, after 1975? Response. I still recall that two people, two children, were sent to the northeast zone, one to Mondokiri and one to Croches province. Apart from this, uh, with respect to other zone, those children who did not 
have any skills would les be sent qui, to me to be trained and after they had uh, received training they would uh, be asked to return to their bases thank you question when was the first time that you conducted such a training course in Phnom Penh Quand avez-vous tenu une session de formation you said you arrived in Phnom Penh in late 75. When was the first time that Quand you ran a course, course in Telegram translation? Décodage de, de Telegram. Response. Réponse. I provided training on two occasions, first in 1976, and by mid of 1977, I also lectured on another session, so two sessions only. And If you recall, in those training sessions, did you have um, cadre from all the zones around the country or only some of the zones? Response. No, not cadres Pas from the zones coming to attend the training session. I thought they were children, children who were assigned to um, to be uh, to handle Des the secret coding and who had to acquire these skills. That's why they were sent to be trained coding. under my supervision. Pour, uh, Thank you for correcting my my use of the wrong term. Um, just returning to that question, do you recall if the children came from all the zones or only some parts of the country? Response. So far as I know, not all zones uh, would send the children to us. Only some would do. Je crois me souvenir que seulement quelques-unes des zones envoyaient des enfants, pas toutes. Le procureur. Je vous Now, just before we move into the actual uh, working um, aspects of the telegram officers, Avant de passer, uh, I want to ask you the following question. You were in B20 until late 1975, continuing to work in your telegram translation unit. As far as you know, were there telegram transmission and telegram translation offices in Phnom Penh before you arrived. Du et des de décodage, de à Phnom Penh avant votre arrivée. Response. Réponse. When I came to Phnom Penh, it was almost late 1975. So the establishment of the departments or the telegram decoding sections had already been in place. Bon and his group had arrived in Phnom Penh before I came. So he could along with his group uh, been managing Donc, these to be in place already. Pour que ce soit déjà en place. Now, do you know, and, and please tell us if you don't, 
whether those sections were established immediately after services the leadership entered Phnom Penh, or if that only happened after some time. À Phnom Penh ou un certain temps après. Response. Réponse. When you refer to the immediate arrangement, uh, would you now be referring to the zone création. or to the immediate. city? I, but but my response to you is that uh, the arrangement could not be done immediately. Communication dire, had to be done to different zones. Communicate. Avec, uh, uh, when I said not immediately, it, it, it means that immédiat. everything was already in place. Communication was in place even place, long before uh, the place. Khmer Rouge captured the city. Bien avant que Khmer Rouge and now moving on to the various offices which Pon and Tay supervised in Phnom Penh. Différents bureaux dont Pon et Tay avaient la supervision à Phnom Penh. And just to um, help us move along more quickly, I'll read from your uh, statement, and then we will, uh, we will ask some questions. Again, Your Honour is returning to E3 slash 64. The relevant ERNs are Khmer 00328038, French 00411699, and English 00334049049. And so I'll just read from your statement, Mr. Sopang. Quote. My unit was under the supervision of Pon and Tay. They both also supervised the radio communication and telegram transmitting units at the old American embassy. Pon and Tay were the chairman of the telecommunication section, which composed of two units, one of which was the radio communication unit at the old American embassy, and another was the telegram translation unit at K1, as well as my school. Um, looking at these, at these units, Do, I, do we understand correctly that there were two -nous donc telegram decoding uh, avait deux units? Unités de décodage des télégrammes. Une was qui se inside K1, à l'intérieur de K1, and one was et at your school à or near your school. Ou près de Is that votre école. a correct? Est-ce exact? Response. Réponse. Yes, it is correct. It was not near my school. It was right inside the school. At K1, Pon was in charge. But in Soteros school, I was in charge. But I was supervised by Pon. This is how uh, we were managed. Voilà, donc when it comes to the telegrams work at uh, the old American embassy, Mr. Yus was the one in charge. Pon and Tay were both Pon in charge Tay of my unit and at the same time, they were in charge of the telegram tapping 
and sending off the telegrams at the all American embassy. De l'ancienne ambassade américaine, so, rédaction et envoi de telegrams. Looking Question. at this office at the old American embassy, which was a, de ambassade a transmitting unit, qui était une, une unité de you have just said that it was uh, headed by tout juste de dire que someone called Yo. Du nom de Yos, In your second statement, you identified him as head of K18. Is it correct that the unit at the old American embassy que was also called K18? Response. But, uh, yes, it is indeed correct. At the old American embassy, it was the place where telegrams would be received and transmitted. Telegrams from all across the country would be sent and transmitted from there. It is also called K. 18 and you was the head. However, you was not the most superior person at K18 uh, because uh, he also was supervised by Te and Pon. And if we can just in a, in a very general Question. sense, before we discuss the details, um, if we can just general. confirm that in respect of incoming telegrams, for example, they would be received at K18 before they were Decoded at either K1 or your school. Is that an accurate description of how the incoming telegrams progressed? That's exact. Response. Yes, it is correct. Oui, it's exact. And uh, when the zones or sectors or the commander like Mr. Uh, Son Sen would like to send the messages, uh, he would do so through K18. At K18, the messengers would be assigned to uh, send the messages to K1. And uh, the messages uh, would also be determined uh, to be sent to any particular yes. section, for example, if they needed uh, me or my section to assist uh, with section. that, then we would uh, Donc, be exemple, asked. But if they would like to be sent to PON, then they would do so. It means they would be sending them to Sotiru Donc, location pouvaient, where I was located. Et ensuite, ils les envoyer à Soteros où j'étais, moi. Just picking up that last um, explanation you gave us. Question. Pour apprendre donc sur cette dernière explication. Could you help us understand who it was that decided whether an incoming telegram would be sent to K1 for decoding or to your school. Response. Response. 
Pon was a person who had been authorized Pon. to manage uh, telegrams. Avait he would be the one who assigned uh, tasks to, to me, for example, telegrams to be decoded uh, by me and the enfin, telegrams that he the had to receive or be in charge. He Donc, also had to tell yours that uh, if uh, it had to be sent to him, then the telegrams had to be sent to K1. And Donc, if si they were the si sent to be sent to me, then they would send to si code 38. Moi, 38 code is 38. my code. code, 38, code. And Jules had his own code. code. It would be 57. 57. So 57 Donc, here refers to K18, which was the place where telegrams would be transmitted and received. I just want to make sure that we understand correctly. Um, did Pon give a, a, a standing instruction as to which types of telegrams would go to K1 and which ones would come to your school? Or was that done on an ongoing basis? Response. Indeed, he the one who made uh, the decision oui, time and again. For example, on the telegrams, exemple, uh, there would be some notes at the end with some secret coding. For example, when re it referred secret. to the East, they would uh, exemple, mark si it as A57. So, so in the east, it was the place Chẳng where the Vietnamese invaded, and uh, at that Vietnam location, it was the very important location uh, that the telegrams très, très would important. be addressed to, and it had to be decoded uh, at K1 for telegrams that had to be sent to other areas that uh, were no serious conflicts, then I would be in charge of decoding. And, and just to complete the, the journey, of an incoming Question. telegram. It has been received by K18 Donc, un and it is delivered to you par K18 or qui vous to Pond's office, ou, ou de as the case may be. Tout At that point, du your, either you or Pond's à ce -là, office soit vous will decode ou de Pond that telegram. De ce telegram. And what happens then? Que se passe-t-il par la suite? Response. Repons. After decoding this into the Khmer text Après le or Khmer telegrams, en, en Khmer. we then typed the text. Uh, dactylographier le text du message. And I would then place them into Et the envelopes and the recipient would be K1. When we refer to K1 here, it was Pon who would be our target uh, recipient and he would manage K1, from there. When you say your target would be K1, were there uh, telegrams which were addressed to other uh, officers in Phnom Penh? Y avait-il des messages envoyés adressés à d'autres bureaux à Phnom Penh? Response. When you were asking about incoming telegrams, first uh, they came in as code, like 
And the, then it would be decoded the into, into letters or texts. After that, uh, I wish to also make it clear that uh, these messages would not be Les sent to people in Phnom Penh, but they would be sent to the leaders. They would not be sent to various ministries. When they were sent to K1, it suggests that Pon would be the one who managed to have them sent or delivered to the leaders. Thank you. Um, we, we might come back to that issue and explore it in more detail. Um, just for now, um, can we also look briefly at outgoing telegrams in this period? And perhaps here again, in the interest of time, I'll read from your statement and then uh, then we can um, discuss it in more detail. Your Honours, this is again in E3 slash 64 and the relevant ERNs Khmer 00 328 French 00411699 English 00334049 and this is how you described the process Mr. Sapang quote if the committee 870 wanted to send a message out Pon and Te would go in person to get it from them. They went to take note of the words of the committee 870 and then took the handwriting message to the telegram translation group to have its text coded. After it was coded, the message was given to my personal messenger or the messenger at K1 to take to the radio communication at the old American embassy, York, who was in charge of the radio communication unit there, would manage to get the message to be transmitted to its respective destination. And lastly, the message that was sent out by the radio communication unit was in code numbers since its text had been coded by the translator group and the receiver unit would receive it in code numbers format. So just coming back to that, I want to make sure that we have this correct. Um, outgoing messages would be les messages envoyés handwritten by Pon and Tay based on instruction and they were then coded either by translators at K1 or by you and your staff at the school. Is that correct? correct. Yes, exactly. Response. Yes, it is. Because this, this was the part of the Car practice so far, when the com center committee committee needed uh, anything, then PON would be summoned uh, to take notes. When instructions would be wished to send to different zones and sector, after obtaining the messages, the messages the the he message, would then submit them to people lui, at respective unit, for example, at K1, where K1, the text exemple, would be then uh, re-decoded 
the full message would never be sent straight forward. It had to be converted Jamais into secret coding. So all had to be converted Donc into secret coding. Codé. Even at my place, if uh, Même à où I was needed for decoding si the coding the telegrams i had to also re-decode into more secret uh, coding it, it was several layers of decoding en fait, these uh, secret uh, telegrams and it was really pour complicated pour les, pour les it will take me the whole day to explain the process en fait, it's really very complex we, we understand it's a it's a very complex uh, subject matter, um, and, and thank you for assisting us. We're, we're not going to go into that degree of detail. You'll be glad to, to know. Um, Now, we discussed incoming telegrams and outgoing telegrams. Are you Nous able to estimate, based on your recollection, approximately how many incoming telegrams your office or your school would have translated on any given day? Environ. Votre école ou euh, votre unité décodait-elle de télégramme par jour? During the period of the réponse. when the country was liberated, quand le pays était libéré, we had to decode a lot of telegrams. We had to work de days on devait and nights. Beaucoup de télégrammes. Il fallait travailler jour et nuit. However, after Phnom Penh uh, was liberated, uh, the work load has uh, reduced la de a été dramatically. De façon but in, on average, uh, on any given en day, we would uh, be decoding about par jour, four to ten telegrams. Uh, entre quatre et dix telegrams. This was with respect to the incoming Question. telegrams. Ça, um, do you telegrams recall, entrant. on average, how many outgoing vous telegrams moyenne, de you would have? Fallait-il response? Codé. Concerning the outgoing telegrams, uh, we did not uh, have a lot of outgoing telegrams anyway. At that time, we had a very brief or short telegrams that we had to send out. And mainly, the telegrams were more about uh, distribution of the goods uh, that Mr. Kyusom Pan would like them to be distributed to the bases. Whenever he would like uh, the goods to be distributed, he would uh, send the telegrams to our unit so that uh, the other uh, part or the other side of the communication channel would uh, be expecting the goods to be delivered, the, num the amount of goods to be delivered. Uh, Do you recall how often such telegrams were uh, sent? by Mr. Q. Sampan, was it à uh, on a daily basis, was it once a week or a month or more often, if you do recall? Not uh, that often. Uh, it 
was once in every 10 days. But if we uh, combined the uh, incoming and outgoing uh, telegrams uh, from uh, different uh, regions or zones, uh, then there were many uh, telegrams uh, coming in and going out. Even those, it came uh, in once every 10 days or so, but if all the uh, zone had to receive the uh, telegrams, then there were many to be sent out. I'd like to look briefly at Question. the issue of transmission uh, to and from the, the zones. Um, vers les zones et à partir des zones. You said to us that prior to 1975, there were telegrams from zones and autonomous sectors. Il y avait des télégrammes provenant des zones Was that et also the case after April 1975 when you worked in Phnom Penh? Phnom Penh? But uh, Well, the organization of the uh, zones and sectors were uh, the same as the period before 1975, except uh, uh, one telegram unit uh, relating to the special zone, because special zone was in uh, Phnom Penh. But uh, it was, of course, uh, the case uh, in, in terms of uh, telegrams organization. It was like what we did uh, prior to 1975. And did that communication by telegram continue for the entire period that you were in Phnom Penh? But, uh, Response. Response. Yes, yes, it did. It did continue until oui. the date when the oui, Vietnamese effet, uh, came uh, to Phnom Penh. La date des à Phnom Penh. Thank you. Accusation. Merci. Focusing in uh, on the issue of, of actual transmissions for a, for a brief Se moment. Concentrer. Maintenant sur les transmissions elles-mêmes. I'd like to look at your second statement and see if you can assist us with some of these details. Uh, Your Honours, this is document E3-67. And the passage I will be referring to is at Khmer ERN 0029-4. 0025542 French 00374938 and English 00483971 and this is what you said Mr. Sapang quote Et in communicating with Committee 870, they had their own timing. For example, in one zone, one had to make contact at 7 a.m., 10 a.m., or 1 p.m., 1900 hours. This is an example of one zone. The other zones were all the same. Do I understand correctly? that each zone was compris, uh, allocated or assigned specific times during a day during which they could uh, transmit 
coded telegrams to or coded messages to K18. Yes, that is that is correct. The communication through radio broadcast was in accordance with the, the uh, time of the day. Unless we are on air uh, together, that we uh, could uh, communicate with each other. Uh, radio uh, corrects interpreters the radio communication instead. So all the uh, zones uh, had to allocate the times when they had to um, contact each other. So they uh, organized uh, with each other as to when they could uh, communicate with one another. Sometimes it took place once uh, every day or uh, twice or so every day. And I just want to um, make sure that I understand correctly your answer. Um, were you uh, describing telegrams between zones, for example, between the east zone and the west zone, or was that a description of a telegram from a zone to K18? I just want to make sure I understand. As far as the decoding work was concerned, uh, Pon and I uh, had to uh, decode the messages as they deemed necessary. We decoded messages from sectors and zones, but in certain uh, circumstances, when there were uh, busy schedule going on in other uh, zones, for example, in the east zone or northeast zone, then uh, the message was to be given to me, but uh, due to the uh, pressing uh, circumstance, then uh, we had to Mais communicate uh, very uh, quickly. So even if I was uh, handling uh, the uh, document, uh, but si that document will be um, taken away from me and submitted to K1 uh, for immediate uh, decision. So we had to be uh, flexible as well at the time, depending on the uh, circumstance. Um, I, I'm not sure you answered my question. It probably uh, was confusing. Um, my question was whether, in, in describing those specific times that, that you talked about earlier uh, for each zone, whether zones were sending telegrams to each other whether there were telegrams, for example, from the east zone directly to the west zone. The uh, communication between zones and zone, I did not no, I only received the message that was sent from the zone through my uh, unit, uh, telegram unit. That's what I knew. Thank you for clarifying that. Was it the case that 
radio communication between K18 and the zones was available and functioning at all times, 24 hours a day, or was the service more limited? The communication through radio communication between uh, K-18 and zones were in accordance with the uh, time uh, indicated uh, for the uh, radio communication, as I said earlier. Uh, sometimes uh, the uh, such communication took place uh, three times per day or twice per day or once per day, depending on the uh, actual circumstance at the time. However, if the uh, circumstance justified, then they could um, agree with each other that we did not have uh, to communicate at the designated times. We could uh, meet uh, any time uh, of the day, uh, 24 hours per day. And as far as you knew at the time, uh, through your work, um, were telegrams that were being sent out from K18, were they always received by the various zones or other offices to which they were being sent? Étaient-ils toujours reçus par les zones ou par les autres? Bureau uh, destinataire de ces endroits. But uh, response that I do not know. I dare not say that I was sure that uh, those telegrams uh, reached uh, those zones or offices. And in addition, it was sent uh, through this uh, technology, and I did not know whether or not uh, they reached uh, uh, the uh, target recipients. And in addition, whether or not uh, the uh, person who had to forward the information did it. The president. Thank you, witness, and thank you, uh, prosecutor. Uh, we, it is time Merci now to adjourn Merci for the day, uh, since we did not have the uh, break in between this afternoon session. But before we break, we would like to ask the defense team for Mr. Ian Sari. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to hear the fitness to stand trial by Mr. Um, of Ms. Uh, Yang Tirit. And the two accused were not supposed to attend the uh, hearing. However, Mr. Yang Sari, Les due to his uh, marriage relationship uh, with um, Madame Yang uh, so I would like uh, to ask the defense uh, team for Mr. Uh, Ying Sari whether or not Mr. Ying Sari intends uh, to participate in tomorrow's hearing and the day after tomorrow as well. Council Angadam. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Bonjour, Your Honours. Good afternoon, Monsieur colleagues, Bonjour, everyone in and around the courtroom. Concerning the hearing on uh, the fitness to stand trial of Ms. Uh, Ying Tirat, my colleagues and I uh, will uh, divide it We'll divide our task. I will be here alone. However, uh, Mr. Michael uh, Canovas, uh, he had uh, uh, another um, commitment to prepare uh, for the other witnesses, so we will not be here. 
and as for Mr. Ying Sari, he will participate in the proceedings. However, he would like to remain in the holding cell downstairs. The President, thank you very much uh, for uh, your information. And the time is now appropriate for uh, the day adjournment. And as for the hearing of the testimony by Mr. Nong Pong, will uh, resume on Monday next week, starting from 9 o'clock in the morning. The Monday's uh, hearings will begin with the uh, questions by the prosecution and Mr. Uh, no, so Pong, uh, your testimony has not yet come to an end, uh, so the chamber invites you to come to testify in this court uh, on Monday next week. Secure uh, court officer is instructed to uh, facilitate the transport and accommodation uh, for witness No, so Pong and have him back before uh, the chamber by 9 o'clock in the morning on Monday next week. The chamber wishes to advise parties and members of the public that tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, the chamber will uh, conduct the hearing on the uh, reassessment of the fitness to stand trial by Madame Ying Teret. And we will have the report uh, by expert concerning the reassessments of her uh, fitness to stand trial. And the chamber will uh, start at 10.30, since we are uh, waiting for the uh, International Council for Madame Ying Tiret. Madame Diana Ellis will arrive in Madame the Yang International Phnom Penh Airport at 10 o'clock uh, this morning. Tomorrow, rather. So, since uh, tomorrow hearing is uh, dedicated to uh, Madame Ying Tiret, uh, the two defense team for Mr. Uh, Kyu Sampon and Mr. Nguyen Chia need not be present in the courtroom. Security guards are instructed now to bring the co-accused, Mr. Nguyen Chia, Ying Sari Kyu Sampon, back to the detention facility and have uh, them back uh, to the courtroom on Monday next week before 9 o'clock. However, tomorrow, the 30th of August, for the interest of uh, justice, the security guards are instructed to bring Madame Ying Tiret to this uh, courtroom, and uh, Mr. Ying Sari will remain in the holding cell downstairs to follow the proceeding by audiovisual means.